Hello everybody, how are you doing? How are you doing well? Looking like yourself? Right, today's video, we've just arrived here. Insert picture here. And we're going to be doing a little video, as you can see, it's Bletchley, home of the code breakers. So we're going to do a bit of a video about Bletchley Park and what they did during the war. So, uh, just for now, while we uh, ride there, let's ro roll that intro. Welcome back. Right, I'm going to take you uh, down the road that leads to what I believe was the original uh, entrance to Bletchley Park. Well, it was the original entrance to Bletchley Park. It's the only one I remember. On Wilton Avenue. And if we just go down to the end here, now some of these houses may have been owned. We all had people living in there who used to work in the park many years ago. Well, we're just going to pull up to the gate here and I'm sure this was the original entrance to Bletchley Park you see the hut there, you can't quite see the house from here you see some of the huts and billets that would have been around and indeed the old uh, security office and the lawn in front of the house There you go, that's the original Bletchley Park entrance. As you see, no signs, no nothing to say that is. Now let's go round to the new entrance. We're probably not going to be allowed in because uh, you've got to pay to get in there now. But by the magic of uh, the internet, I've got some pictures and that I can show you up. one of uh, Bletchley's best kept secrets till the 70s. So let's whiz around the front. Incidentally, if you ever want to come here and visit um, Bletchley Park, the best way is probably by train because that is Bletchley Railway Station and where that coach is turning in left is Bletchley Park Literally a very very short walk Look at this noise Wrong lane, wrong everything and what we're going to do is we're just going to go and park up if this coach can decide where he's going we'll take some pictures and I'll give you a bit of info so here we are then we've parked up at the entrance to Bletchley Park which is slightly different as I remember it because he used to go in that way and now obviously parking's around that way so I'm going to cheat now because I've got a bit of paper with everything written on it so if, in the meantime if you look at these pictures we'll try to give you an idea about the history of Bletchley Park and its home right basically Bletchley Park's uh, an English country house estate um, in Milk Keynes uh, 50 miles north of London uh, originally the eccentric home of the Leon family uh, Bletchley Park then became, hello squirrel, what's it like in there, any good? No? Don't mind him, he's nuts. Um, Bletchley Park then became, uh, or was purchased, um, by a property developer who was going to turn it into a housing estate. 
and then was procured by the MI6 in 1938 as a, a vital British um, intelligence centre. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Now the Leon family got it in 1883. Uh, Sir Samuel Herbert Leon. Uh, it originally was a pre-existing farmhouse, and then he extended it, put all other bits and pieces on it, and whatnot. So there we go. That's where it gone. And then in 1938, as Adolf Hitler's campaign across Europe intensified, Bletchley Park was taken over by the government, the MI6. Hugh Sinclair purchased the estate, deeming it a perfect place to move the government code cipher school in the event of war. That was in 1938. Uh, over the... <coughs> <coughs> Cut that bit out. Uh, during the ensuing Second World War, uh, a team of British code breakers at Bletchley Park, then known by the code name Station X, deciphered the machines of the Enigma. Uh, it was a highly effective encryption system used by the Germans or the Nazis, and it was and it was able to intercept German messages, and they could be in the, they could work out the uh, enemy movements. Then, uh, one of the leaders of the code breakers was a guy called Alan Turing. We'll get back onto him in a minute. Uh, he's he's the father father of the theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. And Turing's work and his team in Bletchley Park, they reckon it shortened the war by two years and saved around 14 million lives. And today, you can come and visit. Uh, it's not cheap, it's about £24 a head to come and visit and have a tour. And it's quite busy. Um, look at that, it is quite busy. Uh, you can enjoy the facility. And the exhibits um, ranging from, here we go, uh, code breaking in World War One. they were still doing it in World War I, uh, the role of pigeons in World War Two, and online and privacy in the 21st century, and also the life of Alan Turing. And the 19th century mansion, you can explore it all, apparently, alongside Alan Turing's office and Hut 8, where the Enigma code was broken. Uh, well rebuilt, <laughs> um, the rebuilt code breaking machine itself, the bomb, that's B O M B E, is also on display. Right, and then obviously, um, I said I'd talk a bit about Alan Turing. Now, after the war and his success in the war, unfortunately, Alan Turing uh, took his own life in 1954, um, just two years after being outed as gay. Um, homosexuality was still a crime in Great Britain back then in 1954. Uh, and he basically, he ate an apple which was laced with cyanide and took his own life and is currently buried in a crematorium in Woking, Surrey. Uh, Turing invented computer science and the idea of the computer and John von Neumann built the sto first stored computer. So there you go. That's uh, so that's a bit about Bletchley Park. So it's very very short and sweet, but it's it's something that actually changed the course of the war, World War Two, and even though it's quite a famous place now um, they never actually admitted existence of them having the, an enigma machine enigma machine until the 70s uh, 1974 i believe it was i read that somewhere don't quote me because that might not be right and so the rest of the world apart from those that worked here wouldn't have been aware that the Britain had the Enig machine until those. And there you go, there's a picture. Click the Colossus Bomb by John Van, whatever his name was. The first stored computer. So yeah, uh, that people were all unaware that Bletchley Park was what it was. 
until the 70s when it was all declassified and at the time during the war um, the locals around Bletchley considered the home and the house um, to be part of a uh, asylum for mentally ill people so it was, it was deemed as an asylum or rumoured as an asylum and that's what the locals used to think it was and the people worked there although <laughs> the people that worked there were, were eccentric and rather clever and there was a lot of them in 1938 on the day it opened I think 185 people um, started work here in 1938 so 185 people started work here at Station X as it was known to them as Bletchley Park uh, Asylum as it was known locally to the locals um, yeah so 185 and not a single one of them said a word because they were all sworn to absolute secrecy um, now since the declassification and that there's quite a lot of land went along with Bletchley Park and ironically it was originally purchased from the Leon family to be turned into a housing estate now ironically half of it um, if you look just beyond that flag we can see some houses and that all used to be part of the grounds of Bletchley Park and is now a housing estate so some 70 something years later it's all come full circle and uh, that's where we are now so that's a little bit about Bletchley Park. If you want more info, I'll stick a link up in the description where you can read lots and lots about Alan Turing, uh, the Colossus, the Colossus machine, the first stored computer, um, the theory, uh, science theory, etc., etc., that Alan Turing invented, who sadly um, took his own life due to the way society was back then. Right, I hope you've glad you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, a little bit of history, a little bit of um, yeah, a little bit of something from Bletchley, home of the code breakers. That's why it's known as the home of the code breakers, um, which was secret until the 70s and it was declassified. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, click like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. And I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Keep it rubber side down, shiny side up. And I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. All the best. Bye for now. Bye bye.